during this event so far, we've gotten some great tips on how to make the meetings themselves better. Um, and then Kate Houston also mentioned, you know, deleting boring meetings. And we also talked about pulling things that don't need to be in a meeting out of a meeting. And so I'm super excited for this last talk to introduce Jen Dennard. She's one of the founders of Range and has an awesome talk prepared for you about how to reduce meeting dependency. So you're just not in meetings all the time um, by blending synchronous and asynchronous tools. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jean. Uh, really excited to chat with everybody. Um, Fair warning, if a cat joins my talk, um, you know, she's supposed to be here. She just wanted to say hi. They often join my meetings. Um, I am gonna share some slides real quick. Um, and just like all the other talks, please drop questions and stuff in the chat. Um, I'll try to walk through kind of a few slides that I have relatively quickly so we can get to your kind of nitty gritty questions. All right. Did that correctly show up for you all? Okay, um, so here at Range, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, um, we are a, a team communication startup. We help uh, teams communicate async and live and help kind of blend that, particularly for remote and hybrid teams. And a lot of what we talk about is reducing meeting dependency. And what we're gonna talk about today is how to do that through blending async and real-time communication. Um, so I was super excited by a lot of the talks that happened earlier because uh, I was excited because several people were like, it's so hard to do certain things. And so we're actually going to talk through some of those tips uh, today. So first off, uh, this might sound trivial, but what is async communication? Uh, I was chatting with a friend recently and they were like, what does async mean? Uh, so I wanted to make sure we were all starting from kind of the same place. So async is asynchronous. Uh, and so this idea when two or more people who are communicating don't have to be present at the same time. So they can engage and respond on their own schedule. Um, and so this can happen in kind of different ways. So async might be your emailing, you know, if you don't have to actually respond at exactly the same time that someone emails you or a comment to conversation in Google Docs um, where folks are responding and kind of collaborating and sometimes Slack can also be an async format, uh, you know, in a channel or you don't have to respond immediately. Now Slack's a funny one because it can also be a real time medium where you're actually chatting back and forth and you need someone to be there live. And so that one can be a bit hard to differentiate. Uh, other real time examples are obviously what we're doing right now over video or if you're having, having an in-person conversation with someone. Now blending async in real time, the, the value here is that you can reduce your meeting time uh, and actually help improve the meetings that you have left. Now, the way to do this is to actually break down what your meeting is, the goal that you're working towards into topics or sections. Identify which of those sections uh, is suitable for async and then shorten or remove the remaining meeting time. So hopefully you get time back in your day and feel better and more connected to your team throughout that. So we like to think about breaking down uh, what async is really good for. So I think it was um, Kate earlier who was speaking about async isn't suitable, or sorry, no, Sarah Milstein who was speaking about it's not suitable for everything. Um, there are certain things when you're thinking about meetings that async is better for. So we break it down kind of along three axes. One is the direction of the communication. Is it one way or is it multi-way? Are multiple people communicating? Uh, another is alignment. So how much shared alignment does the team have? Async is really good if you're highly aligned on what needs to happen or what's going on. Real time is really good if there's low alignment or you need to kind of have more discussion to help people understand. And then the level of engagement required. Async is also really good if there's low engagement required. And real time is really helpful if you have a lot of high engagement needed. So some simple examples is, a like, typo code review where you're like, hey, just need to fix this one letter. That's really good for async. It's really just one person communicating out what's going on. Everyone's aligned that you wanna fix the typo uh, and you don't need a ton of engagement on what's going on. On the opposite side, giving feedback is something that is definitely a multi-way communication. You may not have alignment on the feedback that's being shared if you're trying to bring a group of people along. 
And then you need engagement. You need a conversation about what's happening. And so that's kind of a canonical example of what's really good for real time. Now, when we think about applying this to meetings, uh, oftentimes it can be daunting to figure out how to break down the different parts that are suitable for async in real time. So we're gonna actually chat through a few examples and then very happy to also chat through some of your specific ones that you're thinking about. Uh, and I think we've chosen some examples that we do here at Range, uh, so we can share some screenshots and things like that of what it actually is like. So a simple one is status update meetings. I think several folks in the different talks today spoke about how, um, I think it was Kate Houston said she can't recall status updates when they're just said in a meeting. Um, so we're gonna talk through how you can do that. So for async, sharing the update, one person is sharing the update. So it's a one-way direction of communication, high alignment on what happened for the status update, and no response is kind of required to that initial update. Now, the synchronous part often of when status updates are shared is the reaction or the follow-up discussion, right? Often in a stand-up or a meeting where you're sharing goal status updates, it's the blockers or the things that happened that didn't go so well that need to be discussed. And that's where you may need to build alignment on what needs to be done or have a discussion. And so we can actually separate these two parts of the meeting into an async portion and a synchronous portion. And what that looks like is instead of having a daily 30 minute team stand up where you're kind of doing both portions together, you can actually do an async check in that's shared with the team. And then maybe twice a week or even just once a week have a synchronous meeting where you're talking about the blockers and other things that are raised in that status update. And so you're actually cutting your overall meeting time in half, but the level of information and connection there is still the same. And at range, you know, we of course do this using our own product, um, but you can see that we share kind of the main status updates asynchronously within range. And so I, as a leader can actually go in and see the main items that our entire team is focused on, uh, including new hires and even contractors like our teammate, Eddie and things that are more important, we use flags to highlight them that the wind can discuss during a team meeting. Like this one was great. I didn't know Eddie was gonna be called away from a meeting yesterday. And this portion is all async and we can do it on our own schedule. And we have a ton of teams who do it in different time zones. So they might share it at the end of their day and then the rest of the team reads them and engages with them the following day. Now status updates, you know, one might say is a little bit of a lob, easy one to shift async. Um, something that we hear a lot is just impossible to do with async is brainstorming. So um, what we found is that if you break it down again into what's async and synchronous, a big part of brainstorming is often sharing context, um, actually saying like, hey, here's what this project is about, here's what we're trying to achieve, and that often takes up a big chunk of meeting time. And then there's actually some research that shows brainstorming individually can really help uh, generate better ideas instead of kind of just immediately dog fooding or uh, aligning on one idea. And so that part can be really helpful for async. Now, the benefit of brainstorming sometimes is bouncing ideas off each other. Like in our team, you know, I'll see Ryan has shared an idea and I'll be like, oh, that's super cool. Let me add a different idea because of that. And so that follow up or additive and generative ideas can be really helpful to do live. Um, and one thing we noted when we were thinking about this is that if you don't yet have alignment on what you're brainstorming, that can also be useful to do live because you're trying to build that understanding. And so what this looks like is instead of having a three hour or even all day brainstorming meeting, um, like a team planning meeting or things like that, you can do kind of an optional like short kickoff meeting, then separate into brainstorming for a few days and then have a final session where you follow up and share your ideas and kind of bounce them off each other. And one, this gives more time to create those ideas, but also prevents everyone from being in a three hour Zoom call, which no one wants to be in. Um, and here's an example actually from a customer journey mapping session that we did. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been in one, they can actually take an entire day <laughs> and both our team's tolerance for uh, an all day Zoom meeting was low, but also we just have limited time. And so our PM Babika did an amazing job uh, setting up the goals and sharing out context asynchronously, and then sharing a template in a mural where we could all start to share ideas. And then you can see the calendar here where we've got synchronous time scheduled together, and then a bunch of async time to also generate ideas. 
And it worked really effectively to shorten the overall time that we needed to spend in meetings while still achieving the purpose, which was to map kind of our customer journey together. The next one uh, that we've investigated is recruiting and hiring. Uh, so often I think in companies, there's a kind of standard recruiting meeting and process for that. And so we've experimented with being able to blend that into async. So when you're thinking about a hiring decision, part of the async portion that works really well is sharing feedback. So ideally, actually, you don't want to share feedback in a meeting together because it can increase bias. And so you want to have one person, right? It's one person has the context, high alignment on what you observed, and you don't really want to influence others. So it should be done kind of individually. Now, on the opposite side, the decision um, is something that can be really helpful to do synchronous, uh, particularly if there is not high alignment on what can happen. And if folks are kind of thinking about alignment, I often find sometimes you get misaligned later in a process when early there's maybe more misalignment early on uh, around like, what is this role for? Do we really need to hire it? Um, and so that can actually be useful to flesh out in a live conversation. And what this allows is instead of having kind of first a half hour pre-panel interview sync, then a bunch of interviews, then more syncs to kind of align on the candidates, uh, you can actually do things like have a Slack channel for coordinating the interviews and sharing information about the process, uh, interview feedback submitted asynchronously, and then even an asynchronous decision doc to help align folks on the context of where you're going. And we have an example of that that we use here at Range, uh, where we have the decision to be made. Like, okay, we're trying to hire a product design lead um, and the different stakeholders uh, and interview feedback that was shared. Um, now, this was a while back for a candidate we didn't end up hiring, um, but this allows us to see kind of, okay, hey, here's all the context on what folks are voting um, and the decision-making process that we're gonna be using. And so what this allows us to do is actually assess, is there alignment? Like, okay, if voting round comes out really weird and like lots of different answers, then we can decide to have a meeting. But if everyone's really aligned, we may actually not need that. And so this helps us kind of make the decision as part of that process. Now, the last one I think a lot of people hate on doing async is team building. Um, and our team has a lot of fun with it. So I wanted to share a few of those examples and then we'll kind of flow into questions. Um, so part of the power of team building is sharing your own experience and learning from others' experience. So a lot of what can be done async is actually some of that sharing. You can share kind of answers to team questions or kind of share different stories. And that's really one way. Whereas the synchronous aspect is really about reacting and engaging to that sharing. And that's something that you can set up time for or even do back and forth real time. And what that looks like in a kind of high meeting dependent world is you have all these very time consuming events on top of your pack to back uh, Google Meet or Zoom schedule all day. And then you're thrown into a happy hour and you're like, okay, I'm really trying to connect. Um, or you're in like an all day team building event, which even in person can be tiring. Now, in the kind of more blended state, you can have frequent uh, light touch kind of on uh, async team building. You can have more kind of team building spread throughout the week or month, and then more infrequent real time events like the game time one that we just did. And at range, what that looks like is we answer team building questions every day. Um, so recently, this is one of my favorites about what TV or movie character would be amazing on your team. Turns out we have a lot of Ted Lasso fans. Several people mentioned uh, Keely Jones or Ted Lasso on the team. And this actually sparked real-time conversation and meeting, even though folks were responding to these questions asynchronously. And I think this was something that Juan Papa mentioned earlier as well, which folks have different ways of wanting to engage. Not everyone wants to be in a big happy hour or at a big all day team building event or can't because of family constraints or other things that they're dealing with. So this gives people different ways to connect. We found it particularly helpful for introverts. Another thing that our team has done is um, find different ways to do team building. So we have this fun uh, would you rather thing we've experimented with a few times, which is just a simple set of questions of uh, what would you rather do? And you can kind of stack your face next to it or kind of initial just in a, uh, a spreadsheet or a fig jam or something like that. We also did a zine in the summer of 2020 where everyone asynchronously created a zine entry. Mine was a journal with excerpts from my journal, my actual journal in 2020. Um, some of them were a little dark. Um, and we shared those out live. 
So everyone created their zine entry asynchronously over the course of two or three weeks. And then one Friday, we had kind of a live Zoom call for an hour, hour and a half, and then a follow-up Slack channel where we continued the discussion. So it really shifted the dynamic, particularly for people in lots of different time zones to have uh, different ways to connect and relate to one another. So just as kind of a reminder for applying it to your own meeting, and then we'll switch into questions and things like that, um, is that really think about what part of your meeting, when you break down the topics or what you're trying to achieve, which ones is just one person communicating a lot. If they're talking a lot, that's probably a better use for asynchronous time. And then what if everyone is already really highly aligned on something? Also great for asynchronous. And then if you really don't need much engagement, perfect for async. And consider breaking apart your meetings into those sections. Uh, and hopefully this gives you the, the tips to do that with, with all kinds of meetings. Um, so I'll pause there for questions um, and stop sharing and we can pull up the chat and see what folks have. Okay. Okay, we've got I, some questions from Tessa. We've got, um, how do you make sure everyone actually does the async work and how do you build in accountability, especially when some folks have very packed meeting heavy schedules? Absolutely. Um, I think uh, two things are helpful. One is to assess the actual capabilities. Um, so make it a trade off of like, you are, don't have to do these two meetings for this async stuff. Um, I think just adding async, probably gonna land less well um, if someone's already on kind of a big heavy meeting pack schedule. Um, the other thing I like to do is just set really clear parameters. Uh, I think my personality and a lot of many leaders kind of who are trying to be supportive uh, can approach things of like, hey, it'd be really great if you could fill this out um, or really help the team. And I think at some point it's honestly just saying like, cool, Mondays and Wednesdays, we are going to do this <laughs> um, and helping create visibility that everyone else is doing it. And that's part of what we built into range is this visibility of like, hey, everyone else has shared their async check in. So it starts to become peer pressure and not just the lead pushing on that. Mm -hmm. um, great. Uh, one more question from Melind for async. I wonder how do you get in touch with things like body language that tell you what someone really thinks or feels about something. Absolutely. Um, I think I, I've thought a lot about this because sometimes someone sends you a Slack message and suddenly you're like, oh my God, they hate me. Like they think I'm terrible. And then you like hop on a call and you're like, oh, they were just distracted. They had none of these thoughts about me <laughs> um, or they're just having a, a rough day. So one thing um, that can be useful is to build into your status update habit, a way to share emotions. And trust me, I know that sounds awkward to start, um, but it's something that your team can get used to habitually. So for example, as part of range, you actually share a mood emoji each day with your status update. So it's integrated with the work itself. And we found that actually sharing a mood emoji is much lighter weight than responding to the question, how are you feeling? Because <laughs> um, it's a product, it's something we all use regularly. Um, so that can give you kind of a nice pulse. But then I'd say there's also just no substitute for seeing that vibe. So if you have a sense that maybe someone's struggling or you're not sure what's going on with the vibe, suggest a quick call. That is like the, um, I think, ultimate skill at being async is knowing when async is not enough and you need to hop on a call or something like that. And that can be harder sometimes when you have a time zone that doesn't overlap as much. Um, but I think that's the really key is to know the limits of that to better understand how someone is doing. I will add that, Jen, for your, your thing, you said like one way shares are good for async, but like the kind of engagement is good for sync. So you could also, so say we made a company announcement about like, oh, we're changing our health plans or something. Um, that could be something or something that you feel like people may have a reaction to. Then in your one-on-ones or in other meetings, you can check in with people when you have that synchronous time to be like, hey, like, what did you think of this announcement? And then give people a place to share about, you know, how they're feeling about it. But then you're not using that time to like share the actual announcement in every one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. which is just time consuming. And gives folks the space to, I think, react in their own way. Um, I think uh, whether that's a, a nice gift, gift, gift to take over the screen um, or just people need to process. I know some of our teammates are like, yeah. you know, give me a day and then I do want to talk about it, but I don't want to talk about it immediately. And so you can actually have that type of conversation. 
Um, we've got another one from Elaine. How do you efficiently handle recap during the sync meeting after each individual has done async work? This is a great question because I think it's one of the early learning curves of folks switching and incorporating more async because there's this urge to kind of rehash what was shared asynchronously mm -hmm. in the meeting. Um, and I think there's a couple things. So one is to set the expectation that things are read in advance. Um, so let's say you're uh, shifting your stand up to be more async. You might say, okay, we want people to write and read by 10 a.m. And our meeting to discuss kind of highlights is gonna start at 10. Now, one thing useful to do there is uh, to enforce that by being like, if someone's like, wait, what are we talking about? Be like, hey, cool, here's the link, go read it. Um, and kind of reinforcing that you're not gonna spend meeting time on it. The other way is to, when you're writing the async portion is to have a section for things that are need to be discussed. Now in like a project spec doc, I'll add a, question, a section called open questions. And that's the stuff where I want people's feedback and wanna discuss. In a status update or in range, we'll have things that are flags, like I'm blocked, I need help. Um, or you could set up a rule where if you're doing goal status updates, anything that says it's at risk gets discussed in the meeting. Like you wanna have a specific protocol for here's the async information and what of that needs to be discussed live in the meeting so that people know how to raise that and mark it as important. Um, and similar to the uh, session that Jean was facilitating, you can have a dynamic agenda portion of your meeting where let's say something got missed and didn't get flagged in advance, someone can raise that. I think that's really important to not just always assume it gets marked or it may come up in reaction to someone else's topic too. I will add, um, I ran a retro for a launch like a, maybe a month or so ago, and I did most of it async. So I sent a Google form and people filled out things independently. And then I put it all in a Google doc and I said, hey, spend you know 10 minutes uh, reading through it and adding any, you know, plus ones or comments. And then I figured I'd make some time for it in the meeting just to talk about it synchronously in case there was anything someone was holding on to that they didn't want to write down or just reactions. And so I went into this um, meeting and I said, you know, uh, let's just take a few minutes to share any thoughts about this. Does anyone have any thoughts? Um, Predictably, it was just completely silent. And, you know, of the five or six people, no one volunteered their thoughts. Um, but pretty quickly, I was like, okay, I'm sure everyone has thoughts. Uh, let's just take two minutes and, you know, refresh your memory of what happened in this async retro. And then I used the spin spinner and went around the room and everyone had, um, you know, really, really insightful thoughts and built on each other. And so you can just add a bit more structure and uh, specific prompts of like, not like, hey, let's rehash, you know, what do you think went well, but like anything surprising from the retro or any insights you want to point out. So you can use those prompts to make sure you kind of direct the conversation in a, in an efficient way that's not rehashing what the, um, the async portion was. Um, Cool. All right. I think that's all the questions for this section. Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah, absolutely.